In this video, I'm going to show you one good way to use inverse uh, trig functions. Uh, we've known about trig equations for some time, and normally we, we don't need a, an inverse trig function to help us solve this. Uh, so let, let's start with a, a kind of a simpler example, and then I'll, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm getting at. Uh, let's say we had the equation cosine x equals negative root 3 over 2. So we know that what this is asking is uh, what angle, if you took cosine of it, would give you negative root 3 over 2. Um, you know, I suppose we could take the arc cosine or inverse cosine of both sides and solve for x that way, but um, you would likely say, you know, Devin, that's a little uh, overkill, isn't it? We don't really need to, to do all that, and I would agree with you. Uh, if you just think about your unit circle, uh, you think, okay, what points have an x-coordinate of negative root 3 over 2 since we're looking for the cosine uh, value, and it would be right here and right here, uh, which would be 5 pi over 6 or 7 pi over 6 and any multiple 2 pi multiples of those if you keep going around and around and around uh, so, such that these are your terminal points so we would get a, a couple of answers either x is 5 pi over 6 plus 2 k pi plus any multiple of 2 pi 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi 8 pi so we always end up right here uh, or x equals 7 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. And, and matter of fact, doing it this way even has the added advantage of um, not restricting our domain. If we, if we looked at the inverse cosine, you know, if we said our, our definitive answer is x equals cosine inverse of negative root 3 over 2, you remember uh, this is a one-to-one -one, uh, function that there's only one answer for this guy. You don't get all the solutions that we should get like we do uh, this way. So after all that, you're saying, well, well, Devin, what, what's the point of this video then? Why, why are we wanting to talk about using inverse trig functions to solve trig equations? Well, he, here's why. Let, let me show you another example, and you'll see exactly why this could be uh, extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, let's say we had 7 uh, sine x plus 3 equals 0. Here we go. We're going to try to solve for x. So we'd have uh, 7 sine x equals negative 3. And we'd have sine of x equals negative 3 over 7. Right Now, uh, on, a, on a unit circle, uh, I'm sure that there is a place where the y-coordinate of the point, the sine of a particular angle, would give you negative 3 over 7. I, I could probably even see it as a small negative number, so right about here. So I think those points would be here and here that would have a y-coordinate of negative 3 over 7. Here's the problem, though. This is not a nice uh, unit circle value. This isn't one of your standard places on the unit circle. So how could we figure out what angle this should be? Well, here's where inverse trig functions can be extremely helpful. We can pull out our calculator and we can say that x equals sine inverse of negative 3 over 7. All right, now, so let's pull out our calculator. So here we have our calculator up. And so we need to evaluate sine inverse of negative 3 over 7. Um, I'm using a TI Inspire, but uh, you can do this on pretty much any calculator. The buttons might be in a different place, but um, you know all, all calculators, uh, at least graphing calculators, have this feature. Um, here's my sine inverse button, so I'll go sine inverse. Make sure you do sine inverse and not sine of uh, negative three over seven. Uh, now, when I push enter, something uh, as strange is going to happen. Uh, you push enter. And it basically looks like it gives you the same expression. It, it writes it as negative sine inverse of 3 over 7, but that's useless. That, that doesn't do me much more good. What it's doing is, is it's leaving the answer as symbolically as it can. Uh, it, it's using some um, re reflective properties and uh, some symmetry properties of the sine inverse graph. But it's trying to leave it in a perfect format, not give you a, a decimal approximation like we would prefer. Um, and it will be some strange decimal because of uh, the, the weird value that it is. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I would recommend, uh, this is a little trick to get around that. We'll say sine inverse of negative 3.0 divided by 7. 
And basically all you're doing here is you're tricking the calculator into, uh, you're forcing it to make a decimal answer, not a symbolic answer. By putting that 0.0 in there, it's the same thing. Negative three is the same thing as negative 3.0 but you're forcing it to give you a decimal answer. Now, that's not the only way to do this. There's ways to convert your exact values to decimals and whatnot. This is just a quick little, little shortcut. Okay, so um, our radian angle is not gonna be pi over six. It's not gonna be pi over two. It's gonna be some weird decimal because our point is not a nice unit circle value. It's negative 0.4429, negative 0.4429. 0.4429. Now that's this angle here, right? That's that angle there. Um, so we, we, here, let me jot these down. We'll have x equals negative 0 0.4429 plus 2k pi. Because remember, you could go around, you know, a full time around the unit circle and wind up here again. And again, and again, and again, you can add any multiple of two pi that you want. Uh, or there's another angle here. Now this one's gonna be a little trickier to find. Or x equals, um, how do we find this guy? Because all we know is negative 0 0.4429 uh, radians below the x-axis would, would be this angle. Well, you have to get a little clever here. Notice, just look at that distance there. Look at this uh, angle amount here. It's that much beyond the radian angle pi, but in the positive direction, not backwards, but more than pi. So if you realize that, you can be a little clever here, and we'll go back here and we'll take 0 0.442911, etc. Um, the positive amount, because we're going uh, counterclockwise, we're going farther, past pi. So we'll take the pi button here and add that radian amount to pi and that'll be 3.5845. That's a little larger than pi. 3.14 would be pi. 3.5845. 3.5845. Same color. 3.5845. That's this radian angle uh, but again, we're allowed any multiple of 2 pi beyond that. So we'll put plus 2k pi, where k is any integer. k could be 0, and you get 3.5845. Or k could be 1, and you add 2 pi. k could be 2, you could add 4 pi. Or it could be 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, so on and so forth. So these would be the answers to this um, original trig equation. And notice that we could not use just our standard unit circle because negative three-sevenths wasn't a standard value on our, our normal unit circle. And we, we actually required inverse trig functions in the help of a calculator to solve this problem.